All right, hey guys, Dr. Sean here. I thought I'd do a little live for you here. I get asked a lot throughout practice, especially in the last kind of month or two. Gosh, you're like, Doc, you know, everything going on right now, things are crazy. Things are haywire. Everyone's getting sick. Hospitals are inundated. ICU units are overwhelmed. Is there anything we can do to help ourselves? Is there anything we can do? We've seen this kind of uptick over the kind of summer months of respiratory illnesses, vid being one of them, RSV being another, adenovirus, all these things are going. Is there something we can do at home? Is there something that we can do that would be natural? So I thought, you know what, I'll give you one of my favorite tips. This is something I use with all my patients that ever come to me saying, hey doc, I got problems, I'm coughing, I'm hacking, I can't breathe, my sinuses are bothering me, what can I do? Well. In this last several years here, a year and a half now, almost two, we've seen a big change, right? We've seen a lot of uniqueness going on. A lot of strange, weird symptoms and side effects and concerns and worries and fears. So I thought, let's give you something you can do that's easy. I've had numerous patients come through. If you follow some of my other Facebook posts or feeds in my radio show, you'll see them click in. Hey doc, you know the family all got diagnosed with he who shall not be named. And I did that trick you told me, and three days later it was gone. I like that. I had other ones come in and sit there and say, oh my God, doc, I was so miserable and so sick, I didn't know what to do. You told me to take that home. I got my wife to buy the stuff, I started doing it, and a few days later, it was gone. See, what's really cool about this, I'm a firm believer that if you can support your body, give it what it needs, it'll fight pretty good for you. It'll put up a good scrap. Now, it doesn't mean you can't get yourself in trouble and need help, otherwise you can. But this is a wonderful self-help tip to kind of get you through. And this comes from one of my mentors and friends, Dr. Buner. He was probably the top herbologist in the world. Hands down, he's the one name that if you throw out in the herbal world and herbology and the science and study thereof, he's the guy everybody knows. Well, he and I have a friendship and we've shared some things back and forth. He's given me all kinds of wonderful tips and tricks and things that I can do to assist you, to help you out. So here's what I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna share one he shared with me years ago that I really, really like. And it starts with this. The key when you're looking at respiratory things, you gotta A, trap it where it comes in. They like to come in through the sinus passages. <gasps> come in through the mouth, the throat, that area. You wanna try to contain it there. The deeper it gets in, the deeper into the lungs it gets, the more problematic it becomes for people. So if you can do something to limit its effect right there, you're home free. So I'm gonna give you this inhalant recipe that Steve had shared with me many, many years ago and I really, really like this and I hope you'll enjoy this, so here we go. You want to start out with a, a pot big enough to hold a gallon of water, right? It's your standard four quart cooking pot. Get that gallon of water on there. You just get your water and you're going to add it to your pot. Now guys, when you do this, here's the trick to this thing. Put it on the stove, get your four quarts going, start it boiling. Get that thing to a rolling boil. Once it's at a rolling boil, shut the stove off. Remove the pot from the stove. Don't leave it over the stove. It's amazing what people will do sometimes when they don't feel good. Take it off the stove. Get a trivet or something you can set a hot pot on and then you're going to go grab your essential oils. Now the four I've chosen for this purpose are all incredibly, incredibly effective at helping the body to rid itself of respiratory agents. Now remember, viruses and things like that are opportunistic. They're looking for prey. They don't go after strong, healthy, vibrant immune systems. They don't like the fight. They're called opportunistic by all of medicine. Everyone acknowledges viruses are opportunistic in nature, meaning they're looking for a host or an environment that they feel they can thrive in. Don't give them one change the environment so the virus is like, yeah, this isn't a good place to be and it moves. That's really what you're gonna do. Now here are the four essentials. Sage, thyme, eucalyptus, and rosemary. Not rose, rosemary. Those four essential oils or plant essences as I like to call them 
all have phenomenal, phenomenal benefits for your respiratory effect. They all are antiviral to some degree, some more than others. Eucalyptus is a potent antiviral. That's why it's in Vicks VapoRub, right? It's a potent antiviral. So you look at that and think, if I'm breathing that in and it kills viruses, what can go wrong? It's a great idea. So you want to make sure you've got your eucalyptus. Now I put some of these essentials down here for you. You can buy any brand. There's many of them out there. Your big ones will all say, well, we're better than somebody's and so on. There's many, many varieties out there. You can get them at CVS and Walgreens, your local drug stores, your health food stores. They're all going to carry okay ones that'll work for our purposes. Don't go breaking the piggy bank. This needs to be an affordable treatment for you to keep you the heck out of a hospital. That's what we're trying to do here and it'll help you and your family all at once. So as you get into these things, you say, okay, they're antiviral. What else do they do? They thin the mucus that's being produced in the lungs. How many of you ever had a big chest cold and it feels like you're, you're hacking out just a glue? These help to thin that mucus so you can get it out easier. You can expectorate it easier. They dilate and open up the bronchioles of the lungs so you can get that big breath in. So that's another benefit. They all have these effects. And on top of that, they stop that, <coughs> that coughing reflex. They help to suppress the uncontrolled coughing reflex. So you're killing things, you're antiviral, you're thinning out the mucus so I can get it out easier. You're allowing my body to expectorate it and cough it out, spit it out and be done with it. And on top of that, you're gonna open up my lungs so I can breathe easier. All right, that's a win-win. It costs you little, but time. And that's all you have to do. You get your gallon of water, you boil it on the stove, you remove it from the stove, set it on a trivet or something that can handle the hot pan. Then you get your essentials. Now essentials are funny. Some of them will have droppers. Some of them will have a little stick in there. Some of them won't have anything but a little opening. You gotta kinda tip it every time and count the drops. Here's the trick. We're going outside the box here. And this is where I got this from Steven. Outside the box. Normally they'll say, oh, two, three essentials. And that's fine unless we're trying to get something out. So you gotta go bigger. You're gonna go 20 drops of each of the essential oils, 20 drops of sage, 20 drops of eucalyptus, 20 drops of the rosemary, 20 drops of the thyme. You put those in there, it's going to create a very, very powerful scent, a powerful smell, because that's what essential oils are. It's the fragrance of the plant. Get around a field of wintergreen and see what it smells like. When you're cutting it or mowing it, it can be very powerful. We want that going into the head. We want that into the sinuses, into the lungs. You want it coating and moving its way through your bronchioles, telling something that is opportunistic that, look, you don't belong here. Get the hell out. So all you do, once you've added your oils, you sit down comfortably, pull your little seat up, get all squared in there and you just lean. And all you have to do is close your eyes and breathe and then let it exhale. Now here's the deal. I like to follow a breathing protocol when I teach my patients how to get healthy and well. I believe that when you inhale, you're bringing oxygen in. But there's a window of time that often gets excluded when people do breathing exercises. You've got to hold the breath for a minute. So as you breathe in, think like for a count. I'll breathe in for four, two, three, four. Hold that breath. One, two, three, four. Then you exhale. One, two, three, four. It may change. The next breath, you may get to seven. The breath after that, only three. Whatever the inhalation is, whenever you... Breathe in, that's what you want the other two to match. So if I inhale for three, I hold for three, I exhale for three. If I do it for seven, then I hold for seven and exhale for seven. You're creating a rhythm. 
You're helping the body to bring things in, fill the sinus cavity, the throat, the lungs, the bronchioles, get everything open. Give it time to exchange the good oxygen, and in this case, all these essentials that are in the air. Give it time to switch the bad out for the good. That's why you hold. And it's probably the single biggest mistake people do when they do breathing exercises. There's just not enough time to let the waste get out. So breathe in, give it a second, then let it go out. So this is a really simple, easy trick. How often do you do it now? Every few hours when you're really ill. If you're sick and you do not feel good and you've gotta help that body every few hours. Now, here's the deal. You can't reuse it. Because as soon as you put those oils on that hot stove, they're gonna denature. They're not gonna maintain their structure and stability. So you gotta throw it out, new water into your pan, 20 more drops of each as you do this. If you can do that every few hours, it will fill your house. So if there's something there that you don't want, an unexpected guest or visitor, you're gonna usher it right on out that door. It's a simple, easy trick and it does wonders for my patients. I've watched people come and go with different respiratory illnesses that we shall not name and they are like, Doc, my God, that took me out of it. It helped my husband, it helped my four kids, it helped my wife, it helped everybody. How could it not? Look at what it does. Once again, it's antiviral. It doesn't care what respiratory virus, it just says you're not supposed to be here. It helps you thin the mucus in those lungs. It lets you breathe freer and easier. It gets things out and it suppresses that coughing reflex. Now I thought, you know what, I'll give you a couple extra bonus ones that I think are great tips that I share with my patients. Remember we said stop it before it gets in. So if you start noticing, oh I got a little fever, I'm not feeling that good, then you gotta get your filters unclogged and clear. Get them cleaned up. Do everything you can to get those things going. I think tonsils, adenoids, the palate, the mouth, that traps bacteria and gets stuff. Breathe on something in the morning. See what kind of bacteria is living in there. If you can clean that up, it'll help. So my quick tip for you is go get just cheap, crappy table salt. Right, that 49 cent stuff in a can. Take a teaspoon of that, drop it in a coffee cup full of warm water, and just gargle. Your grandmother told you to do it. Your mother told you to do it. Your great-great-grandmother told you to do it. Because they knew when you gargle that salt will actually clean off your filters, it will lice and kill things that are on the surface area, and it takes stress off your immune system. So it can then focus on the thing at hand. Give it this little trick, throw it in there, and you guys watch and see what happens. This will help you a lot through cold, flu, and maybe even the vid season. I'm Dr. Sean, I'm the Robin Hood of Healthcare. Take care, thanks a lot, and I'm gonna shut her down. See you guys, bye-bye.